Hey, what's up, Dilly Gang? Welcome to the Dilly LTTK YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about using the MPC software inside of the FL Studio environment, FL Studio DAW. A couple of things I want you to know about this is that we are running the MPC software inside of the plug as a plugin. Uh, the record function is triggered by the mouse on the screen. It does not happen on the controller on the hardware. So if you're tapping record on the hardware, it's not going to happen here. You have to arm it here. Another thing is that song position on here may not necessarily the same song position on there. There are more ways to get this all to line up. So if you had like a big 40 bar sequence in FS Studio in song mode, then if you have a 40 sequence bar sequence in, in MPC, they will line up. If you don't, then you got to do your math and all that stuff. But we're just going to talk about groove creation right here. So I got the note repeat going and everything synced up. So. I'm going to use the record arm function to count myself in. I'm going to arm the MPC plugin right there. And let's go ahead and put in a little beat right here. Okay, so now we have that in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an 808 from the sampler side in FL Studio just to show you how that lines up together like this. And let's go ahead and make sure that's on point. Let's add some 808s. And let's go ahead and do some classical FL Studio bass sliding. So, put that there. Of course, if you want that slide to go a little longer, just stretch that note out. Alright, so now we got an 8 away from FL Studio working with the MPC plugin right there. One thing to keep in mind is that the MPC plugin only outputs stereo. So if you try to mess with the outputs on your MPC software, you're only going to get a left and right result in the FL Studio environment. Let's go to track two inside of the MPC software. And I created this chop. And we're going to line it up. We're going to make sure we're arm record right there by the mouse on the screen. Let's give ourselves a time of countdown with FL Studio. Hit play. Let's play with that. We got that in there. All right. So here's the thing. So let's say you created a whole track in this method and you want to export separate tracks. Well, if you do it like this, you're only going to get a single stereo track from the MPC in this. So the cool thing is that there's a function over here, and I'm going to drag it over so you can see it, where you can export the WAV file or MIDI. And you can click that MIDI into it. So, for example, if I click this MIDI icon right here off of that chop, that chop I did, and I click that and dragged it in, boom, we're dragging the FS Studio. And those are MIDI notes from the past that I played right there. There's the little MIDI notes right there. Okay. Now, that's if you want to trigger something else there. But let's say I want the, the audio. So I click that. It creates a render file. Export the audio. Let's drag that into a sampler. Now we have it here. So now we got that same thing that we did there. Okay, so now I click that in. But also, if I'm going to do that, I want to mute the original source here so that I don't have them uh, overlap each other like this. So. so I want to make sure I'm muting that. So mute that program. Now let's bring the sample in and see how it sounds. The cool thing is, is that when you do that, you can change the pitch. Because 
now we're back in the FL Studio environment and we can stretch and change the tempo of it. And we can do the same thing for the drums. We can go to track one in the drums and then we can drag those out like that, render a wave file, drag that in like that. Now we have that. Now, one thing that you have to watch out for is that there's some going to be some time left after you render that sample. So you want to watch out for that. Say, for instance, say we don't even drag it in as a sample and we go to song mode and we do the same thing. As you can see, if I go open up that song menu, that ranger, and we can do the same thing in there if you want to do it that way. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of audio right there. You can click and tr trim that back just a little bit but you can see that even with my snapping it's not correct so you got to grab the razor tool do it that way a lot of people work with this in many different ways always like to make the cuts very pretty i don't like to drag samples of tempo i like to kind of do it a little different way than that but you can hear that we got that in there and with that you could just play the the sample by itself, but now we're playing both at the same time. So if I mute that, right? So even if I got rid of that, went back to song mode, and then I just dragged it in there, you got it right there. But keep in mind that it will overlap itself if you don't have it trimmed right. So those are things you got to pay attention to if you work with it that way in pattern mode or in the song arranger mode. So I can grab that there, make sure the sample's cut. Now it mixes a little different. Take the 808 out. So the game structure is a little bit different. It's a little quieter now, but of course with uh, you know mixing and balance, you can you can definitely work with that. But that's a little bit about how the FL Studio workflow works. Of course, you can go as many tracks as you want, and if you want to separate your drum sounds even further. You can uh, export, or I'm sorry, not export, but export it. And now all those tracks are all here. So all those different drum tracks are now here, two, three, four, and five. So if I went to track number two, and then I wanted to export that a little differently. Well, I'm sorry, track number three, which just has one sound in there. So if I blow this up here, you can see that there's like only one sound being triggered. I can render that audio. That's just a kick by itself. Render that audio, click and drag it in. Now I have it there as a sample, or I can drag it in and drag it in on the piano roll right there. But I have something muted, so you gotta pay attention to that. You gotta pay attention to that. So make sure you have the audio unmuted because it will render silence on you. So if I go back, to the pattern like this, click and drag that. We should have a little bit of audio in there if I'm not tripping. And it looks like I'm tripping because I don't see any audio there. Okay, so now if I click and drag it from the snare, you see that we just got the snare samples by itself. Now that's something to keep in mind, all right? Because if you rendered like how I did it mistakenly with the program muted, then you will actually have to go ahead and undo that in the NPC software just so that you can re-render that WAV file again. And I want you to see that so you can see how that kind of mistake and how we could work around it. So you can definitely drag all your separate tracks in the FL Studio and then have them on separate tracks in the Song Arranger. You can do it that way with the Song Arranger. Have your separate audio tracks in here, more on the DAW side there to arrange it. Or you can drag in your MIDI and do the same thing. And then, you know, you can drag your MIDI in here and then use a hi-hat sample from FL Studio. You can do it that way. So those are some options right there that you can 
and some tools you can use to create your songs using the MPC software inside of FL Studio. If you like this type of content, let me know. If you want to see me work the other way around, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this and also variety content where I do a little bit of different things on the channel showing you about musician life and all that good stuff. All right, I'm out of here. You're watching Dilio. You're watching the Dilio T2K channel. I hope this helps somebody out in their journey of making music, and I'll see you in the next video.